Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. The leader of the Spina di Rosula, Navia is here. And in this video I am going to talk about Navia and her complete guide including her farming materials, her playstyle, what weapons she'll use, what artifacts she'll use, what's the best team comps for her, details about her constellations and finally a gameplay showcase. Before we hop into the video, I just want to say that if you find this video helpful or informative, then please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing as well. With that being said, let's hop right in. For Navia's ascension materials, first you need to farm Spring of the First Dewdrop, the local specialities of Fontaine. There are a total of 85 dewdrops available in Fontaine, and you need to collect 168 for her. I already made a farming guide for these dewdrops, please check the video description and pinned comment for more information. Artifice Spare Clockwork Component Dropped by Coppelius, the male ballerina dancer at Fountain of Lucene. Defeat Coppelius and collect 46 of these drops. For her mob's drops, you have to find all the sea creatures scattered around Fontaine's seashore and underwater. Kill them all and collect 36 of Transoceanic Pearl, 96 of Transoceanic Chunk, and 114 of Xenochromatic Crystal. For Geo Stones, collect 1 small, 9 medium, 9 large and 6 extra large stones. Since Coppelius won't drop Geo Stones, you have to find a different way to farm the stones. If you have enough resins to farm the following bosses, you can easily collect all the Geo Stones. Otherwise, you can change the Geo Stones from other elemental stones by using Dust of Azoth. To get Dust of Azoth from Paimon's Bargains, you need to collect Masterless Stardust, in exchange for 5 Stardust you will get 10 Dust of Azoth. For leveling up her talents to 90, you need to farm Equity Series from Pale Forgotten Glory Domain at Fontaine on Monday, Thursday and Sunday. Collect 9 of Brown Books, 63 of Silver Books and 114 of the Golden Books, and finally for her boss drops, you need to defeat the new Whale Boss, All Devouring Narwhal, at Fontaine and collect 18 of Lightless Silk String. The domain of this boss won't be available until you complete the Archon Quest of Fontaine, but you can access this boss easily without doing the quest. Open your Adventurer Handbook and go to the Trounce Domain tab. Scroll down and start the challenge to collect the material. You can also convert the drops by using the Dream Solvent. Navia is a 5-star attack scaling Geo Claymore user, whose character kit makes her a great DPS unit that can deal both single target and AoE based damage. Navia's normal attack performs 4 consecutive strikes dealing physical damage, like the other Claymore users, her charged attack performs a spinning attack on nearby enemies which gradually draining stamina. Most of her damage comes from her elemental skill, which shoots Geo bullets. Navia's elemental skill has two different effects, each with a 9 second cooldown. When a party member picks up elemental shards created by crystallized reactions, Navia will gain crystal shrapnel charges, which will increase her elemental skill damage. From crystallized shards, she will gain maximum of 6 crystal shrapnel charges. You can track the number of crystal shrapnel charges through these bullets markings that appear on the left side. The first three charges will be counted separately, and charges more than three will make the bullets markings a little bigger than before. By consuming three crystallized shards, Navia's elemental skill damage will increase up to 200%. If more than three crystallized shards are consumed, her elemental skill damage increases by an additional 15%. When she uses her hold skill, her Gumbrella enters targeting mode, Picking up elemental shards created by crystallized reactions. After releasing the long press, she will hit enemies with the geo bullets and deal Uzia aligned geo damage. With her elemental burst, Navia unleashes a massive cannon, dealing AoE geo damage for 12 seconds. When the cannon hits opponents, Navia will gain one crystal shrapnel charge, and this effect will be triggered up to once every 2.4 seconds. That means, you will gain up to five crystal shrapnel charges while using her burst. Navia's burst has an energy cost of 60 and a cooldown of 15 seconds. While using Navia, I recommend using her burst first, and then her skill in normal attack. Her first ascension passive is quite nice. After using Navia's elemental skill, her normal, charged and plunging attack damage will increase up to 40%, and it also infuses with Geo for 4 seconds. With her fourth passive, if you are using different elements in your team like Pyro, Cryo, Electro, Hydro, her attack increases by 20%, this effect will be stacked up to two times. For her talent priorities, I recommend prioritizing her elemental skill first, then her normal attack followed by her elemental burst. But in the end, you should level all of her talents as high as you can. 
there are quite a few options to choose from, when picking the right weapon for Navia. If possible, your weapon should focus on crit rate or crit damage, with attack percent or energy recharge being good backup options. Here are the best 5 star and 4 star weapons that will pair well with Navia. Navia's best in slot is her signature weapon, Verdict. This weapon has a relatively higher base attack compared to other claymores, and its sub-stat takes care of Navia's crit rate requirements. The passive of this weapon is also perfect for Navia's kit. When characters in your party obtain elemental shards from crystallized reactions, the equipping character will gain one seal, which increases Navia's elemental skill damage by 18%. The seal lasts for 15 seconds and the wielder can have two seals at once. Since the passive of this weapon is solely created for Navia, this weapon is not very good on other characters, so its usability is limited. Redhorn Stone Thresher is also a good option if you only focus on the stats. This weapon provides a great amount of attack percent with 88% crit damage. But the downside is the passive of this weapon. The defense buff is not very effective on Navia, because Navia's kit revolves around her attack, so you don't need any defense buff on her. Beacon of the Reed Sea is also a great option as it also provides a good amount of crit rate and attack percent. With this weapon, Navia's attack will further increase if she takes damage. But it also has a downside. Navia will often want to be paired with a strong shielder or get shield from crystallized shards, so it's not likely she'll be injured that much. However, even ignoring that part of the weapon's passive, it still competes with other options. The Unforged and the Wolf's Gravestone are also good options if you want both good stats and passives. When choosing the right 4-star option, the new event weapon, Ultimate Overlord Mega Magic Sword will be her best choice. This weapon gives you energy recharge and increases attack percent. It also has an interesting passive where it will increase your attack based on how many Melusines you have helped. With refinements, it's stronger than other 5-star option. Battle Pass subscribers can get several copies of the Serpent Spine. It has 510 attack and 27.6% crit rate at max level, which are good stats. Every 4 seconds, the character wielding the weapon will deal and receive extra damage for a maximum of 5 stacks. Sadly, this weapon is 100% unobtainable for F2P players since you must spend real-life money to purchase the Gnostic Hymn. When it comes to a 3-star Claymore, beginners can start with Debate Club until they get any better option for Navia. There are few unpopular options to choose, but try to focus on crit stats and attack percent weapons which will be beneficial for Navia's kit. Navia's best artifact is Nighttime Whispers in the Echoing Woods, the new artifact available in patch 4.3. The two-piece set increases attack damage by 18%, and the four-piece set gives a 20% geo damage bonus while using her elemental skill. If Navia is using a shield granted by the crystallized reaction, the above effect of geo damage bonus will be increased by 150%. If you lose the shield, the damage bonus will disappear after one second. This artifact is pretty much made for Navia, as her entire kit revolves around taking in the crystal shards from the field. Some of us might not want to invest the resin into a completely new artifact set. In that situation, you can go for the 4-piece Marichaus Hunter set. The 4-piece set condition of gaining and losing HP to gain 36% crit rate, and the 2-piece will increase her normal and charged attack damage by 15%. If you want to use this set, then you have to put Farina in your team, as she drains your HP to trigger the effect. Vermilion Hereafter is similar to Marichaus Hunter, but you have to use your burst to trigger the effect. Golden Troop is also useful on Navia, where the two-piece set increases elemental skill damage by 20%, and the four-piece set increases elemental skill damage by 25%. Additionally, when the character is off-field, elemental skill damage will be further increased by 25%. This off-field bonus effect will be cleared after two seconds when you switch the character. If you don't have those artifacts, then you can also use two-piece sets of two ideal artifacts to get a serviceable build. For example, combining two-piece Archaic Petra for 15% Geo Damage bonus, and two-piece Gladiator's Finale or Shimanawa's Reminiscence for 18% attack bonus. Don't forget that her kit revolves around her attack. In that case, it still makes the most sense to give her an attack percent sand. Then, complement that with a Geo Damage Goblet and Crit Damage or Crit Rate Circlet. Focus on Energy Recharge, Attack Percent, Crit Damage and Crit Rate for Navia's Artifact Substats. With Navia's 60 Burst Cost and 2 Skill Cast, she doesn't need a lot of energy. With another Geo Unit and a Favonius Weapon in your team, she needs at least 120 to 130 Energy Recharge. Otherwise, without another Geo Unit or any Favonius Weapon, she needs approximately 140 to 150 Energy Recharge for her Burst Uptime. 
Most of Navia's constellations is only a DPS increase. Her C1 restores 3 energy for each crystal shrapnel charge used by her skill, and it also decreased her burst cooldown. It does not have a direct effect on damage, but it reduces the energy requirement, practically guaranteeing a stable use of her burst. Her C2 is one of her strongest constellations which increases crit rate of her elemental skill. For each crystal shrapnel charge consumed, Navia's skill crit rate will increase by 12% up to a maximum of 36%. This constellation not only buffs Navia's skill damage, but also deals additional damage when you use her elemental burst. Navia's C4 decreases geo resistance of enemies hit by her elemental burst by 20% for 8 seconds. To use this effect, you have to fill up her burst in time. This is a strong constellation, but its implementation largely depends on the situation. It is most effective in the geo team, where it will allow Navia to perform as a sub DPS unit. And finally, her C6, if more than 3 crystal shrapnel charges are collected, each charges above 3 will increase crit damage by 45% for Navia's elemental skill. Additionally, charges above 3 will be refunded to Navia. In terms of DPS increase, this is the strongest constellation, but it's not a necessary constellation. Navia is perfectly playable at C0, and deals a chunk of damage with a perfect build. When building Navia's team, it's worth considering that she synergizes with Pyro, Electro, Hydro and Cryo which interact with Geo. This combination will allow you to deal more damage, not only with the crystallized shards for her elemental skill, but also for her fourth ascension passive, which increases the attack while using the different elements in the team. To get more crystallized shards and geo resonance, you can place Navia with another geo character. For this other geo unit, you can go for a support character like Zhongli, Albedo or Geo Traveler, where Zhongli provides a thick shield with resistance reduction and also provide off-field geo damage like the Geo Traveler, and Albedo provides decent damage from his skill. Otherwise, you can go for a sub DPS unit like Ningguang or Noel, where Ningguang provides geo damage bonus through her passive and helps you to get more crystallized shards, and Noel provides shield and healing. Since her geo infused normal attacks have a big AoE, she's very effective in generating crystallized shards. If she's also paired with Farina, then she can heal the overall party with her skill. For the other two slots, you either pick buffers, healers, or quick swap DPS units from Pyro, Hydro, Cryo, and Electro elements. For Pyro units, Bennett will be a great support for healing and attack buff which skyrocket Navia's damage. You can also use a double Pyro and a double Geo team with Shangling. These double resonances provide Navia a lot of additional damage and also provide a great amount of Pyro application and crystallized shards. Toma and Dea will also work in this slot. For the Hydro units, your best pick will be Farina. She works like bread and butter in Navia DPS teams, where she can consistently apply Hydro and provides a huge amount of damage buff with her elemental burst. Other than that, you can pick other off-field Hydro applicators like Shinchu, Yellen, Mona, Kokomi and Candice. For the Cryo units we have Rosaria, Charlotte, Diona if you can maintain her burst uptime, Layla who has a very reliable shield, and if you don't have the above-mentioned units, then you can use Kea as an off-field Cryo applicator. Finally for the Electro units we have Raiden Shogun, Ye Miko, Fischl, Beidou, Dori, Kuki Shinobu, and if you don't have any energy issues, then you can also use Lisa as an off-field Electro Applicator. In Navia's DPS team, you don't have to use Dendro or Animo, since these two elements won't react with Geo, and for that, Navia won't get any crystallized shards, which brings us into the next team comps where Navia works as a sub-DPS role. In this team, you can use Mono Pyro units with Bennett, Shangling and Kazuha. Another solid option is a Hydro DPS team with Nuvillette, Farina and a good healer unit. This team will work well with Navia, where she can be played as a quick swap unit. And finally a Hyperbloom team with a Dendro, Hydro and Electro unit, where Navia works as a driver, using her skill and Geo infusion. There are few more characters which will synergize perfectly with Navia in different types of teams. Try to mix and match them to make a great team. For Navia's gameplay showcase, I will use two different builds. In the first build, I will use her signature weapon, Verdict. And for artifacts, I will use four piece of nighttime whispers in the echoing woods, which is her best in slot. The ratio is decent and there's room for improvement. And for the second build, I will use the craftable weapon, Prototype Archaic. And for her artifacts, I will use two piece of Archaic Petra and two piece of Gladiator's Finale, which increases her attack and geo damage bonus. To manage the ratio, I pick a crit rate circlet. My Navia is C0, with talent level 8, 10 and 10. With that being said, 
I hope the guide was helpful, and I hope you will enjoy the showcase. Alright, so that's everything about Navia and her complete guide. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Let me know about your thoughts on Navia and I'll catch you guys in the next one.